Now that you're familiar with the Shin Megami Tensei series, your next step should be figuring out what game you should play first. In terms of hardware, it is highly recommended you have a PS2, a 3DS, and a PSP. If you're like me and don't care about emulation, you can skip the PSP and get a PC that can emulate PS1 era games, but the trade-off is you're going to be playing less recent versions of their games and also have to download fan translations. In this video, I'm going to rate each game that's available in English, officially or not, out of 5, with 5 being a great game to start with and 1 being a bad place to start. Please keep in mind that a lot of the points I'm going to bring up are solely my opinion, but that said, I did take heavy consideration into the fan base and what games they most commonly recommend or don't recommend for beginners. Some of you may be wondering how exactly I'm going to judge each of these games, so I made a list. Point 1. The game's story is average for an SMT game. By average, I mean that the game has a darker story, revolves around the apocalypse, and has demons. Bonus points if it has alignment-based endings. Point 2. The game provides a good introduction to the gameplay and mechanics of the series. The game offers a decent tutorial and provides a good introduction to the system mechanics that can be brought over to other games. Point 3. The game has aged well. Let's be honest, some games in the series require some patience due to their old age. While I think the older games in the series are fantastic, not everyone shares this opinion and I will respect that. Point 4. Direct sequels are an automatic 1 out of 5. I mean, why would you want to start halfway through the plot? That'd be like if some asshole made a series of videos and uploaded part 4 before part 1. Who the fuck would- Oh, um, anyways, moving on. Remember, the rating I'm going to give these games out of 5 is not necessarily related to the quality of the game. The rating is based on how good of an introduction the game provides for the series. Starting with Shin Megami Tensei 1, this is the game that would provide a template for the rest of the series. However, the gameplay is very dated. The press turn mechanic was not yet introduced, and about halfway through the game, you stop worrying about your next boss battle and worry more so about getting lost and the frequent amount of random encounters killing you instead. Even though it's set the standard for the rest of the series, the aged gameplay is hard for many to get into. If you are tolerant of older RPGs, I think this is a game you should play at some point. However, as a beginning game, I would rate this a 2 out of 5. Even though Shin Megami Tensei 2 improved upon the original in many ways, it's still a direct sequel, and it kind of assumes that you've played the first game already. I'd give this a 1 out of 5. The two last Bible games for the Game Boy really aren't that great to start with either. Instead of taking place in the modern world like the rest of the series, it takes place in generic fantasy settings. The games are also much more lighthearted than the rest of the series, and also not that difficult. Last Bible 1 and 2 I'd rate 2 out of 5. However, if you're looking to play the last Bible games for some reason, please note that the first game in the series was localized under the name Revelations, the Demon Slayer. Persona 1 is the first game in the most popular spin-off series of SMT games. The game has more of a focus on psychology and was made easier and more accessible to appeal to a larger audience. However, some feel that the ideas introduced in Persona 1 were better developed in Persona 2 and that the gameplay feels too loose and clunky to be enjoyable. Even to this day, fans argue if Persona 1 is a good game or not. While I said I was going to try to keep quality out of the ranking, the polarizing reception of the first Persona game makes it quite the gamble for a beginner. Overall, I'd say Persona 1 is a 2 out of 5 as well. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Wow, this guy must really hate the older Shin Megami Tensei games. But that's not the case. Keep in mind that these games were from a time when in-game tutorials weren't always standard and everything you needed to know was in the manual. Combine this with the fact that these games have older gameplay that doesn't always meet modern standards, and it takes a little bit more patience on the part of the player to enjoy them. I do think you should play them eventually, but starting out with them may run the risk of alienating you from the rest of the series. Moving on to Persona 2 Innocent Sin, it's generally accepted that Innocent Sin improves upon the original in almost every way. In fact, most fans claim that both halves of Persona 2 have the greatest plot of any SMT game. However, the gameplay leaves much to be desired, with a high random encounter rate and poorly executed negotiation system that feels like a step backwards from the mainline SMT games. I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Persona 2 Eternal Punishment is a direct sequel. I'm giving it a 1 out of 5 simply because you should play Innocence in first to fully appreciate the story. Demi Kids was the first SMT game to be localized with the Shin Megami Tensei title intact. While the game is a lot more kid-friendly and lacks many of the common SMT elements found in the series, its big draw is the fact it's the SMT game that plays the most like Pokemon. If you're a hardcore Pokemon fan, this game may serve as a great transition, but otherwise I don't recommend starting with it. I'm kind of reluctant to give this game either a 2 or a 3, so I'll give it a 2.5 out of 5. Now Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. 
This game was the first mainline game in the series officially released in English, and it introduced the press turn battle system. Being the first truly 3D game in the series also means that this game is a lot less intimidating than its first person dungeon crawling precursors. The only reason this game loses a point is for its extremely hard and possibly off-putting gameplay. The game does teach you all the mechanics early on, but if you don't quickly master them you're gonna go through hell. Digital Devil Saga 1 may be a good place to start too. The gameplay of Digital Devil Saga will be more familiar to those who are well versed in PS2 RPGs, while also providing a great introduction to the press turn battle system. Hardcore Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest fans should definitely consider starting here. Digital Devil Saga 1 gets a 4 out of 5 as well. Digital Devil Saga 2 is a direct sequel, and so I'm giving it a 1 out of 5. Persona 3 is where the Shin Megami Tensei series really got popular in the West, and for good reason. The game is easier than the average SMT game, yet still challenging, and it provides excellent tutorials and explanations for even the simplest aspects of gameplay. I realize that some of you are going to say this isn't the best place to start due to the lack of alignment and demons, but the plot is dark enough to be comparable, and while it doesn't provide alignment based endings, it does provide multiple endings based off of a moral decision. The game is also easily obtainable and cheap for the PS2, the PSP, and on PSN as a PS2 classic. Also, female gamers, take note. Persona 3 Portable is the only English-released SMT that isn't a direct sequel that allows you to play as a female main character. If you're tired of being forced to have a virtual penis, this is the game for you. This game is a 5 out of 5. Persona 4, on the other hand, isn't as good as a place to start. Now before you lynch me, hear me out. The plot is a lot more lighthearted and plays out more like a fucked up episode of Scooby-Doo than a Shin Megami Tensei game. The game is also a lot easier than most games in the series, especially the Vita version, which can lead to picking up bad habits. The game's themes have less to do with morality and spirituality and more about the meaning of truth and accepting your personal flaws. For these reasons, I think Persona 4 is only a 3 out of 5. I think this is a good time to note that there are a lot of people that have played only Persona 3 and 4 and either think the rest of the series is garbage or just never try them for whatever reason. Please don't be one of these people. And if you are one of these people, then you get the demonica stare of shame and disapproval. <laughs> As for Rado Kuznoa vs. the Solus Army, this game separates itself from the rest of the series by being set in the 1930s and by being an action RPG. However, it wasn't until the sequel that the action RPG gameplay was expanded upon and made truly good. Solus Army's gameplay is odd compared to the rest of the series, and the plot is more like a thrilling noir than a demonic attack on humanity. I'm giving Rado 1 a 2 out of 5. Even fans of action RPGs probably want to avoid playing this one first. Raido Kuzanoa vs. King Abaddon is the direct sequel, and uh, I think you get the idea by now. Moving on to the DS, Devil Survivor Overclocked is another fantastic place to start. The basic premise is the same as the original Shin Megami Tensei, and alignment plays a major role. The game is fairly difficult, but just keep in mind that you can run away from free battles and keep the experience you've earned. While the game is a strategy RPG, the press turn battle system is still present and the series mechanics are explained well. This game is a 5 out of 5. Devil Survivor 2 is overall a lot easier than the original game, but there's a sudden spike in difficulty due to the last two days having overpowered bosses. The plot and tone of this game is best described as a mix between Nocturne, the original Devil Survivor, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. This game is a 4 out of 5, but I'd avoid picking this one up yet because a 3DS re-release is in development. The mainline game Strange Journey is also a good place to start. The only reason Strange Journey loses a point is due to its setting and its difficulty. Strange Journey takes place in Antarctica instead of modern day Japan, which may not sound like a big issue, but does change the overall tone of the game. Also, the main characters are all military elites instead of average civilians. While debatable, some say that this game is even more difficult than Nocturne, and newcomers may become frustrated with some bosses. <coughs> or boss. <boars. coughs> Strange Journey is a 4 out of 5 in my opinion. Persona 4 Arena is a direct sequel to 4 and isn't even an RPG. 1 out of 5. Soul Hackers is the most recently released SMT for the 3DS. It's a port of a PS1 game, which was a port of a Sega Saturn game, so it's a little rough around the edges. The game doesn't go out of its way to explain mechanics to you, and the cyberpunk setting is something that only exists within this game. I'd give Soul Hackers a 3 out of 5, but I will say this. Soul Hackers is a very good bridge between the modern Shin Megami Tensei games and the older ones. Last but not least, we have Shin Megami Tensei 4. Atlas has stated they want to make the game accessible to newcomers while also being difficult, and Japanese reviewers claim that they have succeeded. 
This is about as standard as Shin Megami Tensei gets, and early copies even come with a guidebook to help you during the early parts of the game. Shin Megami Tensei 4 looks to be a 5 out of 5. Hopefully, this video helped you find your first Shin Megami Tensei game. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on YouTube. Well, that wraps it up for part 2. Tune in for part 3, where I talk about general gameplay tips and strategies.